Hello and welcome to my presentation on continuous fiber additive manufacturing in the automotive industry. My name is Ryan O'Quinn and I'm happy to be presenting to you an ME6560 today. We'll start today's presentation with a crash course in continuous fiber composites, what they are, their applications in automotive, and what to consider when manufacturing them. With that, we'll be prepared to dive into additive manufacturing of continuous fiber composites. We'll give an overview of the processes and on-market options available, and then we'll cover the performance that can be achieved. Finally, we'll conclude and take any questions that you have. Fiber reinforced composites combine fibers in a polymer matrix, which can be either a thermoplastic or thermoset. Fibers used include glass, carbon, aramid, and natural, among others, and they can be either chopped or continuous. Today we'll be focusing on a common, but not the only application of fiber composites, which is to create parts of increased strength and stiffness. Chop fibers can create modest increases in strength and stiffness, but today we're focusing on continuous fibers because they can enable significantly greater increases in strength and stiffness. Continuous fibers can come in several forms, including woven fabrics, non-woven mats, unidirectional tape, and roving or tow as pictured in the top right. If you look at the GIF below, you can see a demonstration of the comparative deflection of non-reinforced, chopped fiber reinforced, and continuous fiber reinforced plastics under load. Continuous fiber composites applications in automotive are primarily for light weighting or reducing the weight of a vehicle to improve its fuel economy. Because continuous fiber composites can offer greater specific strength than aluminum, steel, and many other materials, they are ideal for light weighting. Additionally, part consolidation can often be achieved through continuous fiber composite designs using fewer parts to achieve the same function. An example of continuous fiber composites in automotive is a joint Department of Energy, Clemson, and Honda project to create an ultra lightweight thermoplastic composite door. Here, a thermoformed continuous fiber composite design was used to reduce the total door weight by 45% and also reduce the part, part count by about 45%. Some goals in manufacturing continuous fiber composites include minimizing voids through consolidation. If you look at the image on the right here, you can see our continuous fiber toe, which is comprised of many individual fibers surrounded by our matrix material. And to create our composite, we want our matrix material to fully penetrate and impregnate all of our fibers and eliminate any voids in the middle. And this is typically done through application of pressure and sometimes heat. Additionally, we want to align our fiber orientation and content with our loading because fibers are only strong in tension. We want to eliminate fiber discontinuities like the branches on a tree. And finally, we want to minimize tooling and processing costs. The ultra lightweight continuous fiber reinforced thermoplastic door demonstrates some challenges in traditional manufacturing techniques. Namely, the orientation and layup of the fiber had to be compromised with a less optimal design in order to achieve manufacturability. Continuous fiber reinforcement has been demonstrated with a variety of additive manufacturing technologies. Because FDM is what has primarily been used and commercialized, that is what we'll focus on. If you look on the right, you can see the breakdown of processes by company on the market today. The main way they differ is the way in which the fiber and polymer are combined. So you can either add your polymer with dry fiber in the hot end, or you can do the same thing only with a prepreg fiber or you can use purely a prepreg and not add any uh, matrix material in the hot end. Or you can do a inline impregnation setup outside of the hot end. Additionally, you can use energy deposition or mechanical techniques to improve the interfacial bonding and consolidation. Specialized design and slicing software is required to define fiber placement, but the upside is you can achieve highly optimized fiber placement through this. Here you can see the continuous fiber additive manufacturing companies listed by their parts per year and part size so they target. And for the automotive industry, we're looking more towards the higher part counts and depending on the application, maybe some larger part sizes as well. Among these 13 companies surveyed, four identified transportation as a top target market. And to highlight a couple of the big names, Mark Forged is the most established, arguably, in the continuous fiber additive space with their industrial and desktop printers um, and also their, their IGER software 
they tend to focus on the smaller scale. So one thing they like to advertise is what they can do for manufacturing tooling um, and end effectors for automotive manufacturers like Deco. Then you also have continuous fiber composites, which has a pretty interesting uh, process by which they impregnate their fiber with a photopolymer resin and then cure it by shining a UV light on it right as it comes out the nozzle and they can print in free space like this through that technique. Now let's look at the performance of additively manufactured continuous fiber composites. The biggest benefit is that fiber orientation and density can be controlled and optimized much better using additive techniques than in traditional processes. There's also potential for directly producing continuous fiber layouts in 3D space. Continuous composites is one example of that, where you're no longer limited to a 2D plane and you can produce more complex three-dimensional fiber layouts. You can also achieve easier and better components using additive techniques compared to traditional composites processes. On the downside, the degree of fiber impregnation differs by additive process. But in general, additive processes have higher porosity compared to traditional processes, which is bad. Like all FDM, the weak interfacial bonding and voids between neighboring beads and layers is still an issue, although coupled energy deposition can improve this. And due to these above mentioned problems, generally lesser mechanical performance is achieved through additive manufacturing of continuous fiber composites compared to traditional techniques. And there's also time cost and scalability concerns with additive. To summarize, continuous fiber additive manufacturing is an up and coming field with many companies establishing themselves. It's useful in the automotive industry for light weighting and consolidating and use parts and also for fabricating tooling for automotive manufacturers. Continuous fiber additive offers more control over fiber layout and increased design freedom compared to, to traditional processes. But it has challenges in obtaining mechanical properties comparable to those traditional processes. Finally, automotive's long development cycle and established manufacturing and supply chain make implementation of composites challenging. But these continuous fiber additive companies are establishing themselves and making inroads uh, in the industries where they can so that hopefully they're, they're setting up the long-term case for implementation in the automotive field. So with that, uh, I'll conclude and show you my references here. Uh, thank you for attending and I'll answer any questions that you have.